discussing the module 7 of the organic chemical technology course. We have discussed the uh, various petrochemicals which are manufacturing. So, now the two important topic that is remaining that is the aromatic production and the aromatics, different aromatics which are find wide application in the organic chemical industry. So, we will be discussing. So, let us discuss first the um, aromatic production because here the production of the aromatic there is a lot of the change in the process technology from the initial stages where the aromatics were only available through the um, through the coal chemicals root means the coal carbonization from the coal cobalt plant. But with the coming of the uh, catalytic reform with the development of the catalytic reforming process and at the same time with the um, pyrolysis gasoline which is rich in the aromatics and some of the condensate fractionation, some of the high aromatic naphtha where the de-aromatization of the naphtha that can be done. So, with the coming of these process plus some of the other process that has been developed in case of the aromatic production, aromatic produ uh, production technology, aromatic conversion technology where some of the um, aromatics like tylene or the metagen they are having the lesser use. So, conversion of this these uh, uh, aromatics to the more value added aromatics and that has these are the some of the advances that is thing. another development is the cycle part. So, all those things that will be discussing in the uh, coming in this lecture. So, first the introduction about the aromatics importance of the aromatic various roots of the aromatic catalytic reforming aromatic although the catalytic reforming part we have discussed in detail in the petroleum refining the process is the same only here the uh, our um, catalytic reforming that is more with more emphasis on the aromatic production not the gasoline and the development that has taken place in the process itself and just to have the higher aromatics in there. So, then the aromatic complex pyrogelene manufacture which is one of the again very important aromatics and the huge amount of the pyrogelene that we are using in the manufacture of the DMT or the terethylic acid. Then we will be discussing about the aromatic conversion process and in the last the cycler process where we are making the aromatic from the propane and butane by, by the cycler process. Aromatic hydrocarbons especially the benzene, tylene, xylene means the para xylene, ortho xylene that we are more interested, ethyl benzene that is also um, because one of the important feed stock for styrene or the major feed stock because during the process all this benzene, tylene, xylene, ethyl benzene that, that will be there or major feed stock for a large number of intermediate which are used in the production of synthetic fiber, resins, synthetic rubber, explosive, pesticide, detergent, dyes, intermediates and the pharmaceutical industry. Huge amount of these um, your um, aromatics we are using. So, the benzene is one of the most versatile chemicals used for variety of intermediate and pesticide. Benzene also find application in the manufacture of large number of aromatic intermediates and pesti pesticide. Benzene word capacity of um, benzene from steam cracker and refined steam is 56 million tons and the capacity is expected to reach 62 million tons. Other aromatics which are of the important product from the aromatics that you are getting is styrene from the ethyl benzene, cycloaxane from the benzene because cycloaxane that is find um, finding application in the manufacture of the caprolactam first benzene is converted to cycloaxane and then cycloaxane that is being other by solvents also we are using chlorobenzene and aniline these are two another very important product which you are making from the benzene because the aniline that is the um, raw material for the dyes intermediate 
another product of the benzene is very important because we have already discussed that part that is the linear alkyl benzene LAB which is um, because of the ref coming of the refinery benzene is available and so they, that has ch changed the whole actually the detergent industry status. Another process as I told the cumin um, from the benzene cumin root that is for the making of the phenol that is also the major consumer of the benzene. So, here uh, while making the phenol other actually outlet because uh, this is not a complete is we will be discussing while discussing the um, aromatics in detail about the individual aromatics where the, you see the cumin to phenol, phenol to bisphenol and bisphenol to polycarbonate like that. The continuous um, use of these chemicals are there. Uh, tylene that is having the less application if you compare with the benzene or the paragylene. So, the it is used as a solvent because the alternative processes which we are now using the benzene that was from the just like take the you take the case of the caprolactam that was the actually the benzene root that we are benzene to cyclosine root that we are using, but the thialine to benzoic acid and then the raw material that is also one of the root. So, this is the other usage of the manufacture of the thialine is the benzoic acid one of the very important organic acid which is being used for the making of the lasom of the um, organic chemicals TNT trinitrotialine because that was the explosive earlier now although the now the new bit of the explosive that has come, but the TNT that was one of the very important explosive during the world war 1 and 2 and the lot of the development that was there in the catalytic reforming process also to produce aromatics and so that aromatics which was required either for the synthetic fiber industry or for the your and this explosive. Caprolexum chlorodeliversive nitroethylenes, tylene sulfonic acid, tylene sulfonic benzaldehyde. So, these are the some of the other product of the important product of the tylene. Xylenes are another important aromatics, the paragylene is used for the manufacture of the DMT and tetrathylic acid. Orthogylene is used for the manufacture of thylic anhydride because thylic anhydride that is find wide application in the paint industry as plasticizer. Earlier the route was through the naphthalene route that was the route available earlier, but now the um, all the thylic anhydride that is produced from the orthogylene because orthogylene is one of the major by product which we are getting while making of the paragylene. Uh, this is the actually status of the and if you see the major portion that is going for the thyl benzene, cumin and other products that is also there nitro benzene or the anilines, but major portion that is going to ethyl benzene and ethyl benzene to styrene. Uh, this is for the uh, styrene that is the gasoline you can because this is the very high octane number that you are having, but uh, uh, the other applications are also there. Similarly, the paragen this part is maximum for the manufacture of the polyester means the terethylic acid other uses are also there but these uses are less than what we are having the a major portion that is going for the manufacture of DMT that was the earlier uh, route for getting the polyester now the terethylic acid or the purified terethylic acid which is the raw material for the or the monomer for the your polyester industry. Uh, you see the one of the um, we forgetting the aromatics that was from the coal and that is one of the various um, your product that you are getting from the coal carbonation unit and the yield around that is uh, you see the yield of the benzene and xylene that is much less than what you are getting from the 
petrochemicals and that was the reason why this is the figure which I was telling 2 to 8 kg benzene 0 0.5 to 2 thiolene and 0 0.15 to 0 0.5 kg of the xylene. This is the amount of the um, aromatics that we are getting per ton of the coal. So, the um, definitely this is a very small quantity, but you see the before coming of the catalytic reforming process where we are making the aromatic, this was the um, source available for the um, getting of the aromatics which were um, having the large application. Another route uh, that is not the exactly the purpose of the production of the aromatic that was for the olefin, but during the steam cracking process we are also getting a complementary steam that is the pyrolysis gasoline. So, that is why I have added this part the steam cracking of the hydrocarbon. So, steam cracking of the naphtha and the light hydrocarbon like ethane and the propane produce liquid product pyrolysis gasoline which is rich in aromatics containing about 65 percent of the aromatics about 50 percent of which is benzene about 30 to 35 percent of the benzene produce worldwide from the pyrolysis gasoline because the uh, as I told you earlier also while discussing the cracking naphtha cracking the pyrolysis gasoline is more in case of the when you are having the naphtha cracking and as we are having around 52 to 55 percent of the total feed as a naphtha for the steam cracker. So, definitely the amount of the pyrolysis gasoline generated that is large. Uh, so, the uh, major route for the aromatics that is the catalytic reforming process, catalytic reforming means the same process which we discussed in case of the um, petroleum refining in the module 6 that was the catalytic the same similar process we are using here also. So, catalytic reforming is a major conversion process which converts low octane naphtha to high octane gasoline and produce aromatic rays um, in BTX. Major reaction involve a dehydrogenation of the naphthenes uh, to aromatics isomerization of the paraffins and naphthenes dehydrocyclation of paraffins to aromatics and the hydro cracking of the because this is the side reaction that is already we discussed in detail about the reactions and the feed stock what are the various controlling parameter. And another process which is uh, one of the commercial um, installation is also there in I think it is in Nigeria about this process. This process BTX is produced by de-aromatization of the propane and butane. The process consists of the reaction system, continuous regeneration of the catalyst and product recovery. Catalyst is a property zeolite uh, incorporated with a non-noble metal. Here also the we are having this region of the reactor preheater so there just like the catalytic reforming process and the we are getting the aromatics from propane and butane. Another process the hydro dealkylation and disproportionation because these are the process that we are using um, for the dealkylation of the uh, your tiling or the disproportion of the tiling and so that because to get the more valuated product. So, this proportionation also we are using in the process of the xylene, para xylene manufacture where the meta xylene that is having the less use of the meta xylene that is converted to para xylene. So, isomerization, disproportionation um, or the isomerization part that is there. So, in case of the, this is the actually so far the disproportion is concerned this is only for the toilene because in that process while making the para xylene some toilene is also formed. So, that toilene that can be so some of the units they are also having the part of the both the process are there in case of the para xylene the isomerization the disproportion is are dealkylation. De-aromatization of the naphtha as I told you the 
some of the nephta they are very rich in the aromatic. So, instead of going for the catalytic reforming, this process involves the removal of the uh, extraction, not, not the extraction of the aromatic from high aromatic nephtha feed without prior reforming, because now the number of the your solvents that is available and so from that we are able to extract the aromatics from the nephtha. Here we do not need any further uh, reforming process for this making of the aromatic. The process is useful for nephtha having high aromatic. Jet forming process, this process use meta, metallo silicate zeolite catalyst to promote dehydrogenation of the paraffins followed by alumization and dehydrocyclation of paraffins followed by the alumization. QTI pyroforming process, this process uses a shape selective catalyst to convert C2 and C3 paraffins to aromatic. Chevron Aromax process, it is similar to the conventional catalytic reforming process and L type zeolite catalyst that we are using. Isomerization and the isomer process, as it was the isomerization process, process is also the part of the integral part of the now the paragenic process. This process consists of the conversion of C8 steam into valuable ortho and paragenic having isomerization and the isomer separation stage. These are the two stages involved in case of the isomerization in it. Now, let us discuss in very brief about the catalytic reforming which we discuss in detail in the module 6 that the catalytic reforming is a key conversion process in petroleum and petrochemical industry. From the petrochemical point of view, it is important for the production of the aromatics and the hydrogen that we are getting as a byproduct and from the reformate we can um, separate this uh, aromatic. The catalytic uh, reforming gives flexibility to meet gasoline octane number requirement. It can also make aromatics of high market value. Catalytic reforming is a refining process that use, uses select, selected operating condition and selected uh, catalyst to convert the low octane naphtha to the high octane naphtha and the more aromatics. Basic objective of the catalytic reforming is um, as I showed you in the refinery, it is the sum of the re catalytic reforming process in the refinery. They are producing the benzene or separately only the xylene as in case of the BRPL which I told you earlier there is the refining and petrochemical they were making earlier DMT, but now the type plant has been closed um, because of coming of the purified teletech is in the market. So, the there they are having the only xylene plant. Uh, Panipat refinery, IOC Panipat refinery they are having the both catalytic reforming and the para -xylene. Plant is there to produce high value aromatic hydrocarbon such as BTX. So these are the some of the objective of the catalytic reforming. Basic steps, just I will go quickly because already we have discussed the feed preparation, temperature control reaction in the reformer, and product recovery. Various types of the catalytic reformer are the semi rejectivity, non regeneration, cyclic moving bed. Two types of the reformer reactors are in. Uh, it may be radial or the axial flow. These are these various steps involved in case of the catalytic reforming, naphtha hydrotating, catalytic reforming, catalyst uh, circulation and the regeneration. These are the some of the reaction dehydrogenation, the main reaction isomerization, dehydrocyclation of the paraffins, hydrocracking reaction that is taking place uh, simultaneously because that is a uh, high temperature environment is there and so the uh, that is undesirable part of the major units of the aromatic complex because that was the uh, catalytic reforming process because we are making the uh, aromatics then the next section in case of the aromatic plant that may be the separation of it. So, we are having the PSA pressure swing adsorption, BTX separation. A pressure swing adsorption that we are using in case of the paragelin separation that is the parex process. 
gyalin fractionation unit for separation of the orthogyalin from meta and the para gyalin because the here the boiling point of the orthogyalin meta and para orthogyalin is around 140 d centigrade and meta and para gyalin they are have they are the close boiling component around 136 to 137 degree centigrade. So, the separation of the meta and para gyalin um, is there. So, that is the two process we are using one the your I told you the pressure swing adsorption second process that we are using the crystallization. So, adsorption here is the parex process and the there are also combination of these two process hybrid process where the crystallization and the adsorption both are your adsorption process parex that has been developed by UOP. So, both the process are there hybrid process where the combination of crystallization and adsorption is there. So, the what are the steps in case of the um, BTX because as you say, I told you the boiling point of BTX benzene tyrolin gyalin is different. So, depending upon your requirement a definite fraction of the uh, naphtha that you will have to take here and here also one of the requirement that will be the naphthenes rich naphtha so that the more and more aromatic so, first step in making BTX is to distill of a suitable fraction rich in the naphthene which serves as the precursor for the aromatic. Catalytic reforming or a um, steam cracking to produce aromatic because the, uh, the pyrolysis gasoline that can be combined after the hydrogenation by the removal of the impurity then it can be combined with the reformate for making for separation of the aromatic. Preliminary treatment of this cut fractionation and selective uh, hydrogenation essentially pyrolysis gasoline because that uh, hydrogenation that we are doing in case of the pyrolysis gasoline because a two stage um, process is there. Then solvent, solvent extraction because during the air and uh, your catalytic reforming process aromatics and non aromatic both are. So, non aromatic component that has to be separated. So, various separation of the aromatics we are having the liquid liquid extraction, extractive agiotopic distillation, adsorption and the crystallization. Process variable in case of the aromatic process in the catalytic reforming, feed quality, temperature and space because if you are using the uh, feed, uh, feed quality means the if you are interested for the only uh, para gyalin then definitely plus 110 um, fraction of the naphtha that has to be taken. If you are interested all the three products then the lower boiling point is naphtha that will be used. So, this was the already we discussed n plus 2a importance of the n plus 2a because that will so the effect of the feed quality on the aromatic yield. Lighter fraction have a poor naphthene and the aromatic content are therefore poor feed for the deforming. Low initial boiling point feed results in lower aromatics and hydrogen yield. Heavy fraction have high naphthene and aromatic hydrocarbon content therefore good reforming feed but tendency of the coke formation is high in case of the heavier fraction. Uh, this is the typical aromatic complex where combination of the catalytic reforming and the separation we will be discussing separately then it will be more clear where we are having the extractive distillation for the separation of the aromatics from the non aromatics then the uh, clay treatment and then the uh, various uh, distillation columns we are separating the benzene which is the lower boiling point tylene and gyalin's mixture that will begin and that gyalin mixture um, which C8 uh, hydrocarbons which will also contain the thyl benzene then the separation of the thyl benzene and further fractionation that will give the ortho xylene and then the a mixture of meta and para gyalin which will be separated by crystallization and the adsorption process. This is the process which I was telling the two important feed stock for the aromatic production that is naphtha and this is the pyrolysis gasoline. 
So, two stage hydro desulfization passage in case of the pyrolysis gasoline and then the naphtha it will go to the catalytic reforming separation of the non aromatic fraction and then the clay treatment and finally, it will go to the different columns for the separation of the benzene, tyline and xylene and, and xylene and ethyl benzene. So, the separately because this part this is the part up to. So, many of the refining what they are doing they are separating on the benzene and rest of the steam that is going to the fuel steam. Uh, but in case of the, if you are interested for all pyrazyline then all the uh, this further it has to be separated. This is the process we are using in case of the separation because this is the again uh, whatever the your uh, after the separation of the tyline and ethyl benzene mixed xylenes that we are getting containing the ortho xylene, para xylene and meta xylene and the xylene or meta and para they are having the close boiling point. So, they cannot be separated by the distillation, but ortho xylene which is having the around 140 degree centigrade boiling point. So, that is separated by distillation here, here you see the this is the separation of the xylene uh, meta and ortho that is the P para xylene is steam and so that is the ortho xylene that you are separating from this column, this, this is the column where the ortho xylene because you are mix xylene and the C9 hydrocarbon first that has to separate before it is going for the separation of ortho meta and para xylene. So, here you see this is the meta xylene that is separated at 140 degree centigrade, then we are having a mix xylene uh, means the para and meta xylene. So, separation that was the initial because this was the uh, development in case of the aromatic production. Um, otherwise, earlier this crystallization process was not developed well, adsorption means the parallax process was not developed. So, removal of the, uh, the separation that was a problem. In it. So, this is the how the we are having the two processes now it is available and that is being used by different petrochemical complexes where we are making the para xylene separated by crystallization or it may by it may be the adsorption where we are using the parallax. Um, just like we discuss about the LAB then it was the molex. In case of the olefin it is the ol olex process, here it is the parallax process. Then the um, again after the separation from the crystalline uh, crystallization and the adsorption again it is left with the mixed xylene it will be more meta xylene. So, as I uh, told you the meta xylene that is having very less application. So, uh, isothalic acid that is the only applic major application of the meta xylene. So, what we are more interested in case of the your para xylene bond, it is the more production of the para xylene. So, whatever the meta xylene that is left that is going to the isomerization section. Similarly, the tyline which is available um, in the process which is having the less use. So, we are having the tyline disproportion which I told the various aromatic conversion technology. So, this is the another process and that is the two section. In some of the plants only isomerization section is there and in some of the both the units are there where the isomerization and the dis. So, from the isomerization again we are separating the para xylene because you see the major as I told you the major portion of the para xylene is for the manufacture of terethylic acid and with the coming of the polyester and the terethylic acid or DMT which is the monomer or which is the major raw material there has been lot of the impact on the synthetic fiber industry. So, this is the process of making because these are the units which are there in case of the apart from the catalytic reforming. Catalytic reforming for the production of the aromatics and then the separation of the aromatics benzene, triline, ethyl benzene, xylenes and then the um, your conversion of the 
metagyalin or the shialin to the more valuated product paragyalin. So, disproportionation or it may be the isomerization in case of the metagyalin to para and the ortho. So, that is the how the um, your paragyalin plant which are the part of the DMT or the TPA manufacturer they are operating. So, this is the actually as I told you the feed stock that is playing important role in the production of the products we are getting from the catalytic of farming. And as here our objective in case of the um, petrochemical complexes is the production of the benzene and the xylenes because the benzene that is required in case of this um, where the LAB they are also making or it may be the other uses for the caplolactam as in case of the GCFC they are getting benzene from um, Indian oil. And so, the xylenes that is the fraction you see the xylenes the fraction of the naphtha which will be taking here 60 to 90, 90 to 110 because if you are going beyond this more formation of the tylen and xylene will be there. So, our interest is here in case of the benzene because uh, you see the refineries they are operating both in the gasoline and just like BPCL you take the case of the BPCL they are separating the aromatics in case of the uh, reliance in case of the Panipet refinery, um, this uh, Madras refinery MR, this all uh, Madras refinery are now the Cochin and this um, um, Madras or Ch Chennai petroleum refinery that is the, that is taken by the Indian oil. So, in all they are um, all the Haldia refinery, they are producing the benzene are the challenge depending upon the requirement. So, you will have to go for the choice of the feed stock accordingly and the different fraction of the naphtha which will be taking. And if you are using for the octane bending then a broad range of the naphtha that you can take. So, for the xylene is concerned only this uh, fraction of the xylene that has to be taken. Uh, these are the some of the units which you discuss in the flow diagram for the paragyalin just I will go quickly. The pretreatment unit this unit is used for reducing sulphur content because the removal of the sulphur that is very important. Um, the reformer unit catalytic reforming unit to get the maximum amount of C8 aromatics by reforming process similar to the catalytic reforming process we are having the same type of units same type of the operation that you are doing only our uh, ob objective is towards the more and more benzene or the xylene. Then the fractionation unit for the separation of orthometer and the para xylene from the combined C8 is reformate and isomerate from the isomerization unit after the clay treatment. Parex unit this unit is for the separation of the para xylene by selective adsorption using molecular shape followed by desorption. So, this was the real breakthrough we can say in the production of the paragenin of the coming of the UOP parex process. Now, other process like they have also de developed this process for separation of the paragenin, but uh, it was the main actually the role of the UOP which developed this process. Other method for separation of the paragenin is the crystallization process and we are using this process also in some of the uh, plant and uh, reliance they are using the crystallization process for the separation other un uh, units they are having the parex unit for the separation of the paragenin. Then the isomerization and the deallocation this is also the part of the many of the refinery isomerization of the C8 stream from parex unit reaching the meta and the orthogyalin and ethyl because ethyl, ethyl ortho xylene that will be very less ethyl benzene to para xylene which is sent to the fractionate, fractionating unit for separation of the high component high end component. The bottom of the column is recycled for further recovery of the xylene. So, uh, this is the parex process where the continuous adsorption and desorption that is taking place and then the recovery of the extract, recovery of the, the 
your the desorbent that is there and so the finally, we are separating the your paragenin. So, this is the process, uh, this is the continuous operation of the rotary valves are there and the here input of the feed and then the feed outlet all those and the addition of the desorbent all this taking place simultaneously in this continuous adsorption column. The same process is there also in case of the molex process. Now, let us in discuss in very brief about the various aromatic conversion process. The, one of the very important is the isomerization process, isomerization of the metagyalin to para and the arthrogyalin, transalkylation and disproportionation that is the transalkylation disproportion of C7 and C9 stream, trialin disproportion, trialin disproportion of two gyalins and the benzene. So, these are the some of the options available for converting the low value product to the more value added product or in the process it is because our as I told in case of the um, xylene, if you are making some xylene will be also there, meta xylene will be there. So, how to utilize this effectively to increase the productivity or the reduce the cost of the para xylene manufacture that will be the isomerization or the tiling disproportionation that may be the aromatization that is the conversion of the light hydrocarbons to benzene, tiling and xylene similar to your reforming process. Uh, these are the some of the uh, aromatization process that is cycler process, aeroforming process, M2 uh, forming or the jet forming these are the some of the processes for the aromatization. Now, let us discuss about the cycler process uh, that is one of the very important route for making of the aromatics that is through the natural gas. So, cycler process inexpensive and plentiful as the LPG is uh, there even because you see the many of the refinery even the naphtha that was surplus they were thinking to go for the LPG mode cracking of the naphtha to LPG mode or in the LPG that is available from the uh, various process in the refinery itself or LPG that we are also separating from the natural gas before it is being supplied to the fertilizer plant. So, the this LPG that can be used for manufacture of the um, um, aromatic. This requires minimal feed treatment and product purification requirement and simplicity in the operation which we are facing in case of the um, other conventional process. So, feed is propane and butane, pentane or mixture of these. Liquid product largely BTX essentially free from C6, C9, paraffinic and nap. So, this is more pure form of the product that we are getting. Preparation of the benzene, tyrolene, xylene charges are very little with the composition of the feed. Uh, this is the typical yield of the aromatics depending upon uh, the feed either you take the propane or the butane. You see the difference is not much in the your aromatic yield is whether the so propane or butane or the propane butane mixture that can be um, taken. So, very high hydrogen yield 5.5 to 6 percent of the feed purity is about 95 percent and so this hydrogen that can be used elsewhere. So, this was the cycler process that is being used for the and these are the some of the series of the reaction that is taking place from the uh, in the cycler process where you are getting um, the hydrogen which I told you the high purity hydrogen that you are getting and this is the aromatics that you are getting. So, these are the series of reaction that is taking place in the process of the conversion of the natural gas to the or the propane butane to aromatics. Uh, this is the typical L LPG aromatization unit developed by the EOP and where again we are having the series of the reactors and uh, this is the uh, sorry this is the stack interheaters and this is the reactors we are having the stack reactor. This type of reactor also 
that are being used in case of the catalytic reform. So, stack reactors and the interheaters are there and finally, after the um, your conversion it is going to the we are getting the aromatic gas. So, this is the similar to your catalytic reforming process stack reactor one reactor second. So, and the finally, continuous regeneration is also taking place. So, this was about the aromatic production and because you see the now the many of the refinery they are going for the integration of the refinery with the petrochemical or even the orange the organization which are producing the uh, your this um, gases only the gas the oil and gas business when you see now they have entered in the petrochemical business also. So, the aromatic production that is going to be enhanced by the various operation because the availability of the raw material another route that may be the condensate which are the aromatic rich naphtha that can be separated. So, these are the some of the process we discuss in the aromatic production and the next lecture we will be discussing in detail about the various aromatic products, why the importance of the aromatic is there. So, the changes in the refinery operation especially with the coming of the polyester and the LAB plant because many of the refineries now they are operating they are catalytic reforming for the production of the benzene as well as para xylene or this they are having the same way. And you take the case of the Patal Ganga when the Patal Ganga was operated started it was the polyester the PTA and the LAB. Similarly, when the Nirma they started they need the benzene for the LAB plant that was supplied by IOC. Similarly, Gujarat state and fertilizer complex they use the benzene from the IOC. So, this was the um, importance of the aromatic production unit and so the next lecture that will be on the various aromatic compounds.